Pirelli World Challenge now begins the second half of the 2014 season championship chase, and it all starts with a return to one of the most popular street circuits in North America, Toronto, and the great track that winds its way through Exhibition Place. It is round nine and round 10 of the GT and GTS championships coming up next. Hi everybody and welcome to Toronto Canada's Exhibition Place and the glorious street circuit that is the stage for round nine of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships. This is the standing start, our pre-race show for the Pirelli World Challenge. I'm Greg Creamer, joined by Jeff Lepper. And Jeff, as we start this second half of the championship, eight races done, eight more to go. You talk about some points battles that are pretty close. Johnny O'Connell hanging on to the lead in that, uh, that GT category have to make some hay while the sun shines here on a street circuit that those caddies are good at and in gts one point that close well that close in gts and that's between teammates of yeah. course nick Johnson, your points leader in that kia motors america kia optima his teammate mark wilkins right behind him in second and those guys i think it's going to be an inner team battle with kia they're leading the manufacturers championship but you brushed on it the cadillacs yeah. three natural road courses to finish out the season yep. today though it is a street circuit where the cadillacs have shined all season long they need maximum points here both for manufacturers and if johnny's going to get that third in a row driver championship yeah because when they go to those natural terrain courses then those gt three cars and maybe one guy in particular who's got immense momentum after sweeping road america mike skeen in that hawk performance audi is on the prowl yeah he sure is kind of struggled in qualifying a little bit still looking for grip in that audi r8 here but that crp team we said it before it wasn't a matter of if it was a matter of when doubled up in road america he wants to do the same here and nick jansen sweeping at road america as well putting himself right back into that championship chase but there's a lot to come here yet in this season it's going to be fascinating to watch there's another aspect of what's evolving right now in the Pro world challenge is the prestige of this championship not just at the start of the season but is still continuing to track new entries we have two new factory drivers from a couple of different marks that are here this weekend. One of them, though, is making a return to the Pirelli World Challenge. He started, in many ways, what has become an immensely successful career right here in the Pirelli World Challenge. It is Kuno Whitmer. And this weekend, the factory Dodge Viper SRT driver returns with a Viper GT3R. And a little bit earlier, we had an opportunity to spend some time and find out about the return of this very talented driver to this paddock. Hi, my name is Kuno Whitmer, and I race the Dodge Viper SRT GT3R. The base that I created in my career started a lot in 2006, uh, a long time ago, and you know, shot right through all the way to 2010, where I picked up a factory ride with uh, Dodge Motorsports. And we've had multiple podiums, uh, especially the long distance races, the really, really nice ones. You know, Sebring 12 hours. We had a second place, just a couple seconds off that first place. And uh, a couple of weekends ago, six hours at the Glen, double podium for the team. Last weekend, I scored my first career pole position at, at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. So all this is just a momentum going forward. And now we're here with, with this Dodge Viper SRT GT3R, and hopefully we can get out of the pole position and a win. I mean, that would just uh, boost my confidence just that much more. Being on track with, uh, with the other manufacturers, it's pretty close out there. I mean, you look at the top five today, we're all within a tenth, and that's, that's what we want to showcase. This is a flat-out sprint race. There's going to be some bumping, there's going to be some grinding. Uh, I want to win this thing as, as being the, one of the only Canadians in, the, in this race this weekend and kind of a hometown event. We could pull this baby off. Well, it was interesting, you know, when I first saw Kuno here this weekend, I said, welcome home. And he nodded and he said, that's what it feels like. Yeah, I really hope that we can make this a long-term deal yeah, and he can be full-time nice. in Pro World Challenge. I mean, that made, like I said, the skies would open up, champagne would fall, everything would be right in the world. Absolutely, and he has already shown some remarkable pace in a car that was sort of a test and development car for the program. That's why they wanted to bring it out and showcase what this Viper GT3R is capable of. And boy, has he been doing that already. Now, when we come back, though, we're going to have a legend of the sport, a driver who at Road America completed his 250th pro racing start in his pro race racing career, one with accolades that are just way too numerous to mention. A legend will be joining us when we come back to the standing start. Welcome back, everybody, to Canada's and Toronto's exhibition place in the Pirelli World Challenge paddock for rounds 9 and 10 of the GT and GTS championships, all part of the Honda Indy Toronto. As promised, we have a very special guest for you. It is really a legend in many ways, Jack Baldwin. And, uh, you know, we've talked about a little bit uh, leading into this, Jack, the achievements that you've had, certainly over 250 starts now for your professional racing career and still going strong. 
it, you've had a lot of success over the years in a wide variety of absolute top tier series, and yet you've chosen World Challenge. We got to ask you right off the bat, why? What's the hook? Um, you know, it's fun. It's competitive. It's all the things that I love in racing. You know, so uh, you know the reset MD came in. We brought it here, and uh, it, it seems to be a really good fit. Uh, very competitive car in, that f in the GTS category. So. Uh, uh, and it's a great series. I mean, you know, you look out there and you think, what's what's a very competitive, really good, solid series? A lot of manufacturer involvement, uh, a lot of top drivers. You know, probably World Challenge. I'm here. I'm loving it. Plus, I love the tires. You know, they're fun to race on. Yeah. You know, not every series has great tires that the drivers love. Yeah. And here, uh, you never hear complaining on the tires, starting with me. So, it, that's that's that is a big fun factor. I'm telling you. Well, obviously, something that gives you a lot of grip that you can really hustle and play with is going to be attractive. But I think these guys just relish a challenge, Jeff. Well, it's a big challenge, and it's challenging for you because before you're a driver, now you're a team owner. So you got the team owner hat with the driver. Do the driver and the team owner get to argue with each other? Uh, yeah, and if the driver doesn't do his job, he's going to get his ass fired. So, <laughs> no, I mean, it, it is wearing both hats is, is a difficult situation. I, I never realized how tough it was until I – took those positions and so on the weekend I wear the driver's hat I'm a driver I have a great crew and uh, a great team and, and that's what I do but come Monday morning uh, I'm, I'm back at the desk uh, you know handling logistics questions you know all the stuff that you have to do to run the team it's a, it's a lot more you know years ago I used to just show up and drive and man was that easy when I drove for Buzz now Buzz drives with us and he shows up <laughs> so, and I think he's relishing He that opens role. a closet and pulls his driver's seat out and says, I hope everything's ready. <laughs> and goes, life is good. Yeah, I life is good. One, you obviously. do all the work. You right. know, we were talking about the challenge, and i got to ask you, in the GTS class that you're running in, you guys have one of the smaller displacement engines in it. Obviously, the power differential is pretty significant there. There's a BOP. You guys get to run lighter and everything. But you guys really seem to relish the fact that you're going up against some of this big iron and turbocharged cars with this Cayman and making it work. Well, we are making it work, but we are trying really, really hard. Uh, we've got a great car. The, I mean, the Porsche, it's a great little handling car. It's got a lot of capabilities, but, you know, it, it lacking in torque. What it, what it gains in, in braking and handling and, and being nimble, it also uh, lacks in torque off the corner. So right. we really have to. I mean, I'm up on that wheel big driving it. There's no doubt. Yeah, well, and when he gets out of the car, folks, more often than not, big grins. And we're certainly seeing that here at Toronto. And one of the reasons is this track itself. And to give you a good look at this, it is time for our Cadillac Key Corners. And the guy who's going to give you a run around here is last year's winner overall in GT, one Johnny O'Connell. Hi, I'm Johnny O'Connell with Cadillac Racing, and these are the Cadillac Key Corners here in Toronto. Coming down into turn one, it's hard on the brakes, about the 250 marker down in a second, maybe third gear for this corner if you're carrying momentum. Challenging corner, you saw the concrete there. Up through the gearbox, fourth gear, fifth gear, all the way in the top gear as we come down the long straightaway here. It's got a little bit of a kink, and then it comes into a very good braking and overtaking zone. Turn three, about the 450 marker. We're hard on the brakes. Down in the second gear, into our apex. Notice that concrete, very slippery. Up in the third gear, through turn four, up in the fifth. Now we're hot on the brakes. Back down in the second. This right here, boom, turn five, critical corner. You gotta carry your momentum. Up in the third gear for turn six. Long right-hander, you get a late apex, accelerate on out. Then up the gearbox again, fourth gear, fifth gear, through turn seven. Tricky little kink now, hard on the brakes, down in a second for turn eight. Look at all these pavement changes. Man, that makes it a challenge for us. And the engineers trying to get our Cadillac right. We go into turn nine, again, second gear. Short shift up into third gear for turn 10, hard right-hander. Final corner as we are out of breath down the straightaway turn 11, challenging racetrack here in Toronto. And those are your Cadillac key corners. Thank you very much, Johnny. And I think, folks, you can see why this track is such a favorite with the drivers. Presents a little bit of everything, even a little elevation change that you don't see very often in a street circuit. Yeah, not at all. And this is a sort of a street circuit. You have long, sweeping corners, which you don't normally see in a street circuit. It's uh, going to be a pretty unpredictable race, if you ask me. And turn 11, oh boy, that is a corner where you've got to suck it up and hustle a car through it. It's great fun indeed.
You know what? I think on Friday, when we had the practice and the qualifying sessions, there was churn in every session. Somebody else seemed to be fastest all the time. I think this ninth round of the championship coming up, Jeff, is going to be immensely entertaining. Oh, I think it's going to be entertaining. Like I said before, it's completely unpredictable. We don't know what's going to happen. It changed so much. Qualifying changed till the last minute. It's going to be an exciting. you got to stick around for it. Well, and that's what's next. Round nine of the GT and GTS Pirelli World Challenge Championships right here at Exhibition Place. We're off to the booth. Don't go anywhere. We got a barn burner coming up for you. And welcome to the Pirelli World Challenge at Toronto, Honda Indy Toronto. My name is Jeff Leppard, Greg Creamer. We have a special guest here as we welcome everybody to our global feed at worldchallengetv.com. We're ready to start round number nine, Greg. It is going to be an absolutely spectacular race. Qualifying was a tear. We have Alex Figge joining us once again as he's not able to run due to the uh, crash at Road America. K-Pax, amazing team. Boy, did they try. Just couldn't get the car put together yet. But before we bring Alex in, let's finish up our GT grid. They got a top 10 in GT in your starting order. For our live stream viewers, James Safrana starts in the 10th position in that Spider Thermal Club Audi R8. In ninth, it's Andy Pilgrim from Boca Raton, Florida, and his Cadillac Racing Cadillac CTS VR. In eighth, Alex Figgy's teammate right there, Robert Thorne from Littleton, Colorado, in the second of those K-Pax McLaren MP4 12Cs. Starting in seventh, their top pole winner in the GTA category, the Ryder Engineering Lamborghini Gallardo FL2 Albert von Thurn und Taxi. Starting in the sixth place, Andrew Palmer won a race this year already in that Global Motorsports Group Audi R8. In fifth, your points leader, two-time champ, Johnny O'Connell from Valerie Branch, Georgia, and his Cadillac Racing Cadillac CTS VR. Mike Skeen, your two-time winner at Road America, coming off your defending winner here, Hawk Performance Audi R8 in fourth. In third, it's Anthony Lazaro in the R Ferry Motorsports Ferrari 458 GT3 Italia. And in second, how about this? Local Canadian Kuno Whitmer from Montreal, Quebec, Canada in the Dodge SRT Motorsports Dodge Viper GT3R. And on the pole, the Porsche North America factory driver from Effort Racing Porsche GT3R, Nick Tandy. How about that, huh, boy? Nick Tandy, Kuno Whitmer, two guys, shoes come in, first and second on the grid in GT. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's a great story, and obviously, uh, you know, they came in as ringers, not having started before. They get a little bit of, of a break with some weight and the like. And two factory drivers of that caliber absolutely jumping on that opportunity. Let's talk Pirelli storylines real quick. And well, obviously, Tandy and Whitmer are part of the Pirelli storylines with that great achievement, the two factory ringers coming in and doing what they did. But the other story for me is what about uh, the two Cadillac factory drivers who thought here on a street course that they would really excel. Johnny O'Connell is fifth. Andy Pilgrim is back in ninth. They've got work to do here. It's going to be a tough, tough race for them. In GTS, obviously one of the big storylines is Mark Wilkins' pole here in Toronto, a Toronto native, and then getting bounced to the back of the field. But I think the other big storyline is a guy named Drew Riggett's best ever qualifying effort. He has worked so hard as really, you know, if he were running in uh, in the GT runs, he'd probably be a GTA. And the fact that he has worked so hard to do what he's done and by far and away his best qualifying effort on a challenging track I think that is absolutely spectacular. Now, how about our Motul race analysis? Yeah, Motul race analysis. Once again, this is beautiful exhibition place here in Toronto, Canada. We're going to set for a 1.755 mile, 11 turn street course, 50 minutes time event. It's about 67 degrees out. Of course, we're in Canada, so it's 20 degrees Celsius. You got to call it that away. Absolutely. We're sitting here in the pit lane suites right above the entrance here to turn. 11 in the pit lane, great atmosphere, great here, it's great to see. It is, absolutely fantastic. Alex, got to bring you in real quick here. You uh, running one of the GT3 cars that don't have launch control, it's confounded you earlier in the season, and the Cadillacs, the GT built cars, have an amazing launch control. You think they're going to get the job done at the start, Johnny, anyway, and, be, and, and get to the front, and are these other GT3 cars, you know, is that evolving now? Well, Greg, you see a lot of these GT3 cars making progress now. You know, we've got a lot of them in the series. They're making progress with their launch control. McLaren, Audi, Ferrari, all of them are getting better and better. So I think Cadillac's got to keep capitalizing on this while they can because that, that advantage is going to start to, to diminish. And, you know, as you guys know, these things are exciting, especially on a street course. Oh, but it's unbelievable. And keep in mind, the rest of the races on the season should really, in theory, favor the GT3 cars. So Cadillac has to make some hay here. Big development now. Alec Udell, the number 17 Watson Racing Motorsports Development Group, again, second in the second practice session. Struggled a bit in qualifying, but we were anticipating a great race into the pits early. That is a tough, tough break. Rest of the field starting to queue up here. Interestingly, the field is so big, but the back third of the GTS field will actually be starting almost around the curve here at a daunting turn 11. This track, 
really brings it out of you, including big bravado. Uh, this is one of those tracks, especially to hustle it through turn 11. So we are watching now. We, All right, the grid is full. The green flag flying at the back of the grid. 41 cars, two different classes ready to go. Round nine of the Pirelli World Challenge at the Honda Indy Toronto. 50 minute timed event, folks. What an amazing field. Revs are up. Watch for the start. When the lights go out, we go racing. Ooh, long hold. We're green. Nice start by Tandy. Brilliant start by O'Connell. Bounces off a couple of the other cars. Johnny O'Connell, he is up into second, right behind Tandy. Whitmer trying to hang on to third, but Lazaro down to the inside. It tightens up in turn two. Oh, we got a spin right in the middle of the field. Contact. That's right where it, it, it narrows down into turn two. Alec Biggie, you know that is a tough piece of track. This is going to bottleneck here, Greg, no question. I was uh, involved in an IndyCar race here where there was a, a wreck in the exact same place, and, and it bottlenecks. It's going to be challenging for these guys to get through clean. It was the number 44 of, uh, I think that was uh, Brent Holden, Jeff involved. Looked like he was able to drive away. If the others can get out of there fairly cl uh, quickly, uh, we might be able to keep this one going. We'll see what they're able to do. Yeah, Brent Holden actually drove counter course back towards pit lane to get his car cleared off that track. I think one of the other victims of that looks like Andy Lee in that number 20, best IT Chevy Camaro. Brad Adams got some front damage on top of his car, the radiator, you see the fluids out of there. Oh no, Fred Roberts, the local hero here, the direct energy Dodge Viper comp coupe problems. And there's Nick Janssen stopped on oh, my. Your pole sitter is stopped on the track in GTS. Unbelievable, meanwhile, Tandy comes by. Kudo, Whitmer was able to take the Viper back around as we have a full course caution, full course caution. But uh, Whitmer, perfect timing, able to get that Viper back around and slot into second, pushing O'Connell back into third, Lazaro fourth, Skeen in fifth. But yeah, Jeff, you're absolutely right. Huge developments in GTS. And that's the problem when you get a GT car that's back in the pack a little bit that has a moment like that. Obviously, it's going to gather him. Oh, and Drew Riggetts, again, who had that brilliant qualifying effort, is in damage to the left rear corner. But when you're back in the pack, Alex, that's where things happen. That's a real shame to see for Drew, a Colorado guy. I was certainly cheering for him, yeah, but uh, that's a shame to see. He did such a great job in qualifying. And this field, like you mentioned at the beginning of the show, Greg, it's so long. That start line is so long with 40-some cars that, you know, you have a problem up in the GT field. The GTS guys don't even know about it till they come up on it and, at speed, and, and something like that can happen. I'm sure that was nobody's fault. Well, yep. 40, 45 feet down to 26 feet. And I saw Mike Skeen, Brent Holden, and one of the other Global Motorsport Group Audis get three wide going through exit of two, and that's just not possible. Well, you know, when you have that standing start, like we were talking about at the start of the show, it's uh, the, the starts are getting better for everybody. And so you get a big block of cars. And even though, you know, they're arriving at a relatively slow speed compared to a rolling start, they're all piled together. And you can see that sometimes people get turned around and then it becomes very complicated. Yeah, indeed. And, and obviously the GTS guys just caught up in that. And it's just uh, very, very unfortunate. 34, Nick is saying. Big ah. damage to the right front corner in his natural Kears GTS car. Uh, Drew Riggett's down in the pits, hood up on that car. You know, maybe for Alec Udell, ducking into the pits may not have been the worst thing yeah, for really him because he, does. he was at the way back when all of that happened. Uh, he may have survived that okay, but uh, wow, tough, tough break indeed. And a couple more guys. Ray Mason limping in in the uh, Compass 360. Uh, Children's Tumor Foundation, Toge turning, racing for research. Subaru, damage there too. Boy, oh boy, a lot of damage out of that. Uh, more than it looked like right off the bat as we're sitting right near pit lane. We can see everybody sort of limping in, unfortunately. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a struggle. We got somebody now that stopped down almost at the approach. If you're watching on the big screens and certainly on the uh, web feed, we're getting a replay of the start. And again, you can see O'Connell actually a little pinged into uh, Whitmer then ponged into Lazaro as he split him with a great launch. But at a certain point, it was Whitmer able to go. But here's where the incident happened, right up there. A couple of cars involved, and he kept moving. And as he rolled back, Jeff, that's when he collected uh, more cars, and then everybody just got parked. Yeah, I hate to say this, but it was his teammate, unfortunately, Brett Curtis and Brett Holden, that got together uh, and got him spun around. So just a not enough room there. I don't think you would potentially take your teammate out. No. Not what you want to see, but oh, just heartbreaking for the Global Motorsports Group team. And boy, you talk about this Aston Martins, two of them damaged heavily out of the race. Well, you know, you can see here on the replays, 
that front straight is a wide straight. And so it, it's enticing, isn't it, to try and do something. And then, as Jeff pointed out, that track narrows down big time into turn two. So uh, real, real tough. Folks, we're going to step away for just a minute here on our global web stream on world-challenge-tv.com. But we'll uh, obviously keep calling things here for you at the track. We're going to step away in the web feed, so we look forward to them rejoining us in just a minute. And we want to welcome everybody back here on our global web stream. Hi, everybody. Great to have you here in Toronto. And it looks like a Nick is saying uh, that car is just parked and not able to get moving. Not exactly sure what happened. He was trying to go, and now it has stalled again. And so this is going to delay things just a little bit. And, Alex, as you're in one of the cars, and obviously in a front-running GT car, and this essentially just takes away race time from you guys. Uh, obviously it has to be very frustrating. Like the fans wanting to see green flag racing, you guys want to race. Uh, absolutely. In a sprint race... <laughs> Anywhere you are in the field, you want to race because you're feeling like you made the changes overnight. You've got the car under you, uh, you know, especially for people who maybe think that they missed an opportunity in qualifying. Yep. You want those race laps. And uh, obviously, Nick, they're certainly in what would be considered a, an impact zone. So they are going to have to uh, to do something about that car before we can go back to green. Yeah, absolutely. They are. It's a, You can see there's little bits of debris that have been scattered around the track here. That main area, though, Jeff, over in turn two is pretty much clean. Uh, the beautiful Cadillac Escalade, the safety vehicle that Cadillac provides, they're taking care of some of the cleanup. So the main issue is a couple of these little pieces of debris we're seeing and then getting Nick's car moved. We should be able to go back to it. Unfortunately, just saw uh, Dan Knox coming down the GTA Viper GTSR from the Dodge Viper SRT program down in the pits in that ACS manufacturing performance tech machine. Yeah, just littered of carbon fiber bits. Yeah. These FIA GT3 cars with all the aero packages they have on it, the little canards, the front splitter, the wings, all the little winglets on the sides. When you have an incident like that and you're rubbing up against each other in these tight street circuits, those pieces start to fall off. I think the biggest benefactor from this has got to be our Optima Battery Best Standing Start Award winner, and that's driving that number 50 Mustang, Dean Martin, your current GTS leader now because of that, picked up 10 positions on that very first lap wow. overall. Great run for Dean Martin. That picture car is the East Brahegan Racing Mustang. Well, you know, it's interesting. I was talking to Dean earlier, and he said he came out and he watched GT qualifying, then came out and watched a couple other things, and he said it's first time here. He's never driven this track, and he said he realized where he needed to adjust his line a little bit. He said, so we made some changes to the car. They were expecting a new engine for this race. It didn't arrive in time, so it's a pretty tired engine on that car. Uh, and he said, so we're down a little bit in power, but we think this may have helped. Then the discussion broke out with some people. We were you know, kind of half joking about, has anybody ever won the Optima Battery's Best Standing Start, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Hard Charger Award, the Sunoco Hard Charger Award, and won? And I went, I don't think so. I said, you know, Tomas Enga in St. Pete, but he started on pole and made a mistake and went way back. That doesn't count. Dean was standing there, wasn't in that discussion, but was there while we were talking about it. He might pull us off. That'd be pretty cool <laughs> if he does. And he, well, he, what happened last time we were at a street circuit with Dean Martin? Yeah, swept it. Yep, and was right. leading at the openings at, at, at St. Pete and probably would have won that one had he not had a mechanical issue. So uh, he certainly is a good street fighter. So it should be fun to see. You know, we don't often have the opportunity to have a driver up here of your caliber that 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 is, is a front runner. Andy Pilgrim told me once, he said, these races with GT and GTS, Alex, he said, until you guys catch the GTS field, it's a race. So once you catch the GTS field, it becomes a war. Pretty descriptive? It's an incredible series. Uh, from, from all the series I've been in, the sprint race format combined with the multi-class racing, the GT and the GTS, it is, it is an intense racing <laughs> environment. And, you know, a, a track like this, uh, you know, what are we looking at, a minute and 10 second lap? These GT cars are on these GTS cars in a lap with 45 cars. And, uh, and as, as you'll see when it goes yep. green, as you guys see every weekend, it gets heated, and uh, you know that's 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 when the show starts. Is when you get into the multi-class racing. I, I would 100% agree with Andy Pilgrim on that one. Well, and obviously reading the traffic as you're coming up on it, I mean that opens up opportunities. Also can cause opportunities for the guy who's chasing you uh, if they read it better. That's the high-speed chess nature of multi-class racing as opposed to single-class racing. Uh, there's there's just a lot that you have to keep in mind. You're reading corners, you know, laps corners ahead, trying to figure out how can I maybe get through these guys. I think you also have to remember there's different individuals in each one of these cars. Sure. So, you know, you come up on, on certain GTS cars, maybe you've raced with them for a couple years. Other GTS cars, maybe it's a, a guy 
who's doing a one-off, you don't know him at all. So sometimes from, from both perspectives, the, the slower class and the faster class, you have to be aware of, you know, what are people's habits? Where are they going to be? And, and that can create some, some very challenging situations as well. And you try to set that all up earlier, you know, try to do like three or four corners back or how, what's your thought process in the car and how, how far ahead are you? You know, for me, I really try to start it with practice one. You know, I try to get a read on uh, all the other cars in, in the first practice session and say, hey, what guys are being more aggressive? What guys are being more timid? What, what lines are guys running? Because I'll tell you, it can absolutely make a huge difference in racing if you get balked in some traffic that you, you, won't, you were trying to avoid. Without a doubt, and that's what makes it so exciting is there's that great give and take in traffic, and you love it when it gives, you hate it when it takes, <laughs> to be sure. We are just over 11 minutes in, so we've got almost uh, still 40 minutes of racing to go, and uh, we are hoping here that we are going to be able to get back to green very soon, and uh, we're looking at the pace car has definitely picked the pace up a little bit, and we're starting to see the teams now really aggressively scrubbing those tires up, and, you know, we often talk about putting heat into the tires when you see them scrubbing on those but it's not just heat it's cleaning them off of that junk that's offline especially on a street course absolutely sometimes i think it's hard to see on on television but on the outside of what we would refer to as the racing line where the classic line where the race cars are there are uh, you know small pebble sized essentially rubber scuff that's marbles. come off the marbles yeah. that have come off the car and it is uh, especially in a, in a sports car like this with spec tires things like that it is disastrous if you get out into it so all these guys you're absolutely right trying to get that off of there have as big advantage as possible when it goes back green well that's absolutely key uh, i i also wanted to ask you something while we've got some time pirelli came on board five years ago and in a way really revitalized the change in this championship they signed for another five years have talked to a couple of guys. One of them, when I talked to Kuno Whitmer, the last time he ran with us, wasn't on the Pirellis. And he said, it is unbelievable what this tire is capable of, the difference it's made in this championship. Jack Baldwin made the comment last night. He goes, these tires, a lot." he said, I love racing this series for one reason, because of these tires. I mean, it's the basis of the championship right now is Pirelli's support and their product, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, it makes for great racing. They're, they're ultra consistent. So all the GT cars are on the same tire. You can be confident that you're getting the same tire. You know, the production consistency is awesome, which in a, in a one-make series is very important. And uh, and they last. I mean, guys are turning uh, times at the end as fast as at the beginning, and it makes for some awesome races at the end. So you're absolutely right. Uh, I, don't think we're, I don't think we're as happy to have anybody on board as Pirelli, that's for sure. Yeah, it certainly has changed the whole dynamic, not only of the series, but the cars that have been able to be brought into this series and making this dynamic with six classes spread over the entire wheel. Five classes with one subcategory of the GTA that we'll talk about here soon. And that is kind of like, Alex, your, your perspective, this GTA category that we introduced this year for the gentleman drivers, the guys that aren't making their living doing this. Uh, what's your thoughts about having these guys running? You know, they're in the same type of cars as you. You know, the guy, a guy can go buy a McLaren and race right next to K-Pax Racing and have them support it, whatever. How does that feel as a pro well, GT driver? Well, you just driver? nailed it, right? I mean, you can go buy these cars. That's the GT3 formula, is that uh, they are customer cars, and I think it's terrific. I think it's awesome. All the GTA guys in our series are very clued in guys, very conscious of what's going on in their race, in the GT race at the front. There's really haven't been any problems. I think it's awesome. I mean, are you kidding me? You know, every weekend, 25 of these GT3 cars, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, McLarens. I mean, it looks amazing on the grid, so I couldn't be happier about it. Well, I, I think, I've, and I've said this before, I think the field, the grid that we have in the Probably World Challenge right now stands up globally. You know, because you've got that amazing field of GT3 uh, and GT equipment. Then you add in an amazing grid of GTS, top like Lawson Aschenbach, Dean Martin, I mean, Jack Rose, some amazing uh, pilots. It's phenomenal. And, uh, you know, that's what makes it exciting. You're, you were talking about the consistency of the Pirellis. That's got to be absolutely awesome because obviously as you're burning the, the fuel off the car, it gets lighter, it gets more responsive. you got a good grippy tire that sticks with you. You could just go quicker and quicker here, in theory, right? Uh, absolutely. I mean, that's why you always want to see the ends of these things green, because <laughs> it's going to be exciting. So we're getting word we should be going back to green this time by, Jeff. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Now's the chance. Alex, so you get that call. Hey, we're going green. What do you do now? Uh, right now, you just hope you weren't caught out by it. You hope the team was keeping you posted. Greg mentioned earlier, keeping those tires clean and warm, because in a sprint race, you hate to say it because you don't want to get into any trouble, but that restart is a time to get it done. Now, do you go when the flag goes? Do you go when your crew tells you? you go when the guy in front of you goes? It depends on where you are in the field. Uh, in this racing, you do go racing when the green flag drops, uh, so you Correct, do need yeah. to hear that green call. 
That's awesome. Tandy leads it. Whitmer second in the Viper. O'Connell in the Cadillac third. Lazaro in the Ferrari four. Skeen in the Audi fifth. Five different marks in the top five. That's what racing should be, the Pirelli World Challenge. Andrew Palmer, Thorne, Pilgrim, Sophronis, Mancuso, your top ten. Leading in GTA in 11th is Albert Von Turn in Texas. We are getting ready to go green. And Tandy, boy, he timed that. We'll have to see. That was an early go by Nick Tandy. And uh, there is a start cone. And if you exceed that too soon, it's, a, it's an issue. Yeah, the start cones here on the front stretch all the way around turn number 11. I don't think he waited that long to get to those cones. We'll have to see if the Pirelli World Challenge officials look at that because that's not good. Yeah, he certainly timed the launch so far, Jeff. I hate to jinx it, everybody pretty clean, working down toward the best overtaking area on this track, really down in turn three. But it goes from that wide one to the narrow two, then a little bit of a channeling down into turn three. And your buddy, your teammate Thorne, taking a little look there at the back of Mike Skeen. Brakes have been very strong on the McLaren this weekend. I'm sure Robert uh, felt like he didn't get all out of it, it all out of it in qualifying. He, he's probably looking. You're right. By the way, in the restart, it was Dean Martin leading in GTS. The the Mustang Aschenbach in the Camaro, Roush in the Mustang third, Baldwin in the Porsche fourth, Tony Gables up wow. to fifth in the uh, team car to Aschenbach. Then Rick Boucher in the Nissan, great run there. Landry, Buzz McCall in eighth, Jorge De La Torre in ninth, and Jeff Reeves, two rookies in ninth and tenth. Great restarts there. Here comes Tandy completing the next lap. And right now he is checking out as O'Connell is attacking Whitmer for second. When we talked about that earlier, the Cadillacs come in a lot quicker than the GT3 cars. Their tires get the temperature, they're a heavier car. You'll see Johnny O'Connell strong right now because this is where he has to make his move. Trying down to turn number one. Yeah, it's just not quite close enough. And did you see Tandy? That car was bouncing and bobbing on the brakes. Heading down into turn one, the, the GT3 cars are lighter. Generally, it takes a little more time for these Pirellis to get heat because of the weight. Tandy looks like he's saying, I don't care, I'm driving through it. I mean, you're talking about one of the most successful Porsche drivers there is in the world right now, and Back Nick knows gun, what he's man. doing. And uh, he's also clearly very comfortable on a street course. Uh, I've had the opportunity, like you said, <laughs> in a bittersweet way to uh, to watch a few of the sessions, that, uh, and Nick is uh, what we would refer to as on it this weekend. So. Oh, yeah, unbelievably on it. It's great fun. Now, interesting development here. Uh, like we had in Detroit, we have a GT car that is splitting our GTS uh, GTS leaders, and it is uh, right there, the number 50, the white picture car's Easter Hagen car. Uh, then it is uh, a new guy for the championship, uh, a very solid driver, used to actually just race here. Oh, and we've got a, that's Andrew, Andrew Palmer. Palmer has gone around, and uh, boy, that's a nasty spot. Exit the turn three, Jeff. Andrew Palmer back there, got the car back underway, able to clear the field here. Hopefully, oh, as you see right there, right the in front of our racing. GTS leader. <laughs> oh, man. Boy, this uh, this GTS race has been crazy today, hasn't it? I it's mean, there's fraught. a huge shakeup with the uh, with the damage early in the uh, in the in the running order, and now more drama. Now, yeah, it's just insane. Now, Alex, like, he got spun, and he was there for a little while. Is there like a restart procedure because of these paddle shifters and all that? It takes longer than just turning the key. Because of the electronics in the car, it doesn't naturally want to do those uh, big, awesome, smoky burnouts. So you do have to sort of turn all the assists off and, and, and all that stuff, and it takes a minute, especially when you were caught out by the spin in the first place. Okay. Yeah, you see and that now this GTS battle is going to get real as Walt Boland has slipped underneath the number 50 of Martin, and has picked the spot up. And Jack Ross Jr. working the outside of Lawson Aschenbach down into turn three. Those three cars, the white number 50, right behind it, the black number one of Aschenbach, and the multicolored number 60 behind him. That's one, two, and three in GTS. Yeah, it's a huge gap. Boy, Candy right now is just gone. He just set a 112-1. The next quick lap was Whitmer at a, uh, well, Whitmer now trims into a 112-5. But before that, I mean, the margins were huge. Yeah, Kuno Whitmer able to hold off Johnny O'Connell for now. The lap time's really, really close, like you mentioned, Greg. I got to go back to our GTS battle and watch some of these guys that you don't normally see at the front. Mitch Landry, Tony Gaples, Rick Boucher. Rick got a top five at Detroit, his best run so far. He's backing that up on his street circuit once again in that Nissan 370Z. But you got a lot of guys coming from the back. Alec Udell up to 11th place now, that uh, Watson Racing Ford Mustang. And Mark Wilkins is 10th in the Kia, that Kia, that Mustang. They're coming through the field. By the way, Robert Thorne just setting fastest race lap here at a 1.11.9. First guy into the 1.11s. 
Well, like I said, I think he felt like he left something on the table <laughs> at qualifying. Maybe he's trying to make uh, make up for it now a little bit. Out to prove something for sure, yeah. And uh, so it's Tandy Whitmer, O'Connell, Lazaro, Skeen, still Thorn six, Pilgrim seven, Sophronis eight, Mancuso ninth, and Albert Von Turn and Toxis up into tenth. And Tandy comes by. Here comes Whitmer. All right, well, Tandy just ups the game. A one minute, 11.1 second lap that's a race lap folks that is remarkable the margin now up to over five seconds Jeff Tandy is just making hay and flying right now yeah he's putting the laps down trying to increase that gap here you never know what happens on a street circuit but you want to try to get the biggest gap you can over these guys the battle in our GTS is on Lawson Oshabak at number one Black Dogs beat shop Chevy Camaro you got Dean Martin his pitcher cars these for Hegan racing Mustang Battling now, as Lawson Aschenbach said before when I talked to him earlier, that his car comes on a lot later. They've been working on trying to get earlier because once you get behind, it's hard to catch up. Now he's near the front, so he's going to battle for the lead. Well, he was thinking about a move on the inside, down into one, and of course, Martin covered that, so Lawson tried to the outside, trying to ramp it up. Let's see if he can pull something off down into turn number three. Uh, Martin getting a good run in that picture car's East Mustang, but that black dog Camaro is coming. Aschenbach is hunting. Uh, you know, he won the opening race by default almost when Martin broke. They've struggled ever since. They've been getting a little bit of help here, uh, but that car on the brakes is awesome. If he gets the stiff, Jeff, you know he's going for it. Yeah, Jeff got a Reeves, off there. Jeff off. Reeves, that number 40 Chevy Camaro. Talked to him earlier. They just got this car rebuilt. They don't have the wrap on it yet after his big shot he had in Detroit. Missed the Road America round. He's fighting for that Rookie of the Year championship with Jorge De La Torre. And that Aston Martin said, I just need to come out here and get his finish, get some points. Obviously, that strategy is out the window. Yeah, it's unfortunate. By the way, that lap by Tandy, a 111-1, that is a new race lap record. Three-tenths faster than O'Connell's lap from last year. So we've broken records in qualifying. Now we're doing it in the race. Alex. Well, it's believable when you see the yeah. gap here. Uh, Nick is uh, putting on a, a bit of a show here today. It's uh, running very, very well. Mega. Dean Martin was just sideways at the exit of turn 10, feeling the heat from Lawson Aschenbach. He is wicking it up right now, Lawson is. And you know, that's one of the things, you know, Dean Martin's a great driver, but another great driver at Aschenbach, he's still gonna try and force him into that little bobble. This could be a heck of a battle uh, the whole race, actually. That's, that's pretty neat, that kind of battle for the lead the whole time is pretty neat. It is spectacular. Here comes Tandy in another, another, uh, well, it's not a zip code up here, is it? No, I don't think so. It's a mailing so. code. Yeah, what they yeah. yeah postal he's in, code. He's postal in another code. province right now. It's unbelievable. Oh, oh well, Bowen. A little issue down there. That's a tricky corner, turn one. Go well, back to our GTA category. Sitting in 10th place overall in the GT category, it's Prince Albert Von Thurnoon Taxis and his writer engineering Lamborghini. Gallardo, as we see Tim Pappas, your GTA points leader, coming down the pit lane, talking about GTA. That's him in that beautiful Mercedes SLS AMG GT3. Had a shunt here in qualifying last year. That took him out for the season. Brand new car, your points leader. This is going to be good stuff with our GTS battle now being held up once again by those GT cars. Yeah, and that happens every once in a while. Obviously, you got a couple of the of the GTA category drivers. They're gentleman drivers. They don't make their living as pros, and they don't necessarily have the pace. And behind them, you've got some top tier. Put them in anything, they're going to be good. Well, GTS drivers, it gets interesting. Well, and remember, we saw Knox in the pits. Yeah. So who knows if that Viper is 100% uh, yeah. healthy? But I'll tell you, he's going to play a uh, he's going to play a role in this GTS battle at the front, and hopefully, they have the chance to race it out here. Well, on a tight street circuit, too, the gap that the GT car have over the GTS cars, that streak is significantly so. If the GTS cars are pretty quick cars. We're talking Mustangs, Camaros, Porsches. There's no slouch behind the wheel on those cars either with the drivers. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the, the classes are running closer together, which in turn is going to make passing harder. Absolutely. <laughs> essentially. Well, and it looks as though Knox able to get around Ziegler, so now it's just Ziegler right in front of those GTS guys, and uh, that's going to be interesting to see it play out. I mean, the, on the on the upside of things, Jeff, it's keeping that GTS battle real close at the front. That's fun. Yeah, nobody's pulling away, and I'm sure Dean Martin wants to try to increase that gap a little bit. We got a local yellow down here, Robert Thorne, thinking about getting around Buzz McCall. He's not going to be able to do that because Walt Boland, he inched forward a little bit, now put it into the wall. Yeah, just trying to, uh, you know, find reverse and get that all done. It's kind of tricky, obviously. Thorne and Skeen ducking down underneath Buzz McCall. Andy Pilgrim and that black Cadillac right along with them here as they work through. And Roush has just drifted back a little bit by about, what, six, seven car lengths behind Martin and uh, Aschenbach. 
and right behind them and closing a little bit is a guy named Baldwin. Yeah, Baldwin's closing a little bit, but I just saw Mark Wilkins come through up to sixth place. He's catching these guys. Wow. He's got the fastest race lap in the GT into the 116.5 for Mark Wilkins, a half a second quicker than your leaders right now. Well, all of that up contra top, the carambolage down in turn one, a gift for Mark Wilkins because it took a lot of guys in front of him out. He'd have to normally pass. So that is, uh, and it, he's in the points battle, and that was that was big. If he was able to get through there with no damage, he's loving life. Yeah, absolutely. So pretty intense right now. Looks like some shuffling in the uh, GT category in traffic. I saw Robert was able to get by Mike. Andy's right there ready to jump in traffic, and that's like you guys were talking about. When you get into the back of the GTS field, it changes very quickly. Yeah, I mean, it's all how you read it, and if it, uh, you know, and you can read it well, and then the guy changes his line a little bit, and suddenly you're stuck, and that's it. And look what's happened now. The, uh, the, uh, that battle in GTS, Roush has been able to reel him back in. I think probably Martin may have tried to get around Ziegler, had the door shut, and that slowed them up, and has brought Roush and Baldwin now right into it, Jeff. It really is closing that gap now. Baldwin is consistent, hitting his marks, trying to catch these guys. And these guys aren't racing each other yet. Lawson's not making a move. I think he's learning what Dean Martin's car is doing, not backing up. And since he's not trying to attack, it's really slowing him up. I'll tell you, it looks like Dean Martin is using up a lot of car. Yeah, he's really in P1 as well. It, he? Well, and he said, obviously, he said that the, uh, that the, uh, the, it, the handling wasn't just perfect. Whoa, wide run there by De La Torre, but that actually let some of these guys through. Yeah, nice and clean. And now, here we go, which is what we're talking about. Some of these, these guys working their way up. One of those uh, beautiful R Ferry Motorsport Ferraris based right here in Ontario, Ferrari of Ontario, Ferrari of Toronto. Supporters on that car as yeah. they come whistling Nick. through. Uh, that, I think, is the uh, 16 of Nick Mancuso, also supported by Ferrari of Forest Lake, just outside of Chicago, where Nick is from. Great program, that our ferry team. What a great addition to our paddock. Oh, it sure is. When you talk about Ferrari and history and motorsports, you think about that our ferry right here in Toronto. Had a great party there Wednesday. It was a great dinner. Thank you so much to Remo for that. But Nick Mancuso's had a heartbreak weekend here. Had incidents in the first practice session. Comes out qualifying, backs into the wall and qualifying. Just not the weekend he wanted to have happen. I spoke to Nick uh, in between the first and the second incident. And, uh, unfortunately, he was just a little down. I, I don't think it's his weekend. So hopefully he can run a clean race, get some points, learn for tomorrow, and then tomorrow reset, go back after it hard. Nick's a great guy. He's a great driver. I'm sure he'll make the most of it. Absolutely. And let's not forget, you've got to, whatever happens in this race, you're back in 12th in your class. You've got to get at least one really good lap in because that sets the grid for tomorrow. Great point. If you can get one, especially if you're that far back, why not give yourself a little space, try to put one in, move yourself up the grid for Sunday. You know, Nick could end up collecting a nice top six, seven tomorrow. No, oh, without a doubt. So it's it's entirely possible here. So we'll see how that plays out. We are coming up now on 20 minutes remaining. Mike Skeen has just obliterated last year's track record in the race, turning a one minute 10. Point nine eight six, and I uh, talked to Mike right before the race started, and he said, "We really are starting to figure out what we need in terms of setup on this car." And he said, "You know, one of the things that we've uh, the GT3 cars deal with because they're lighter, it takes a little longer for the Pirellis to come in." He goes, "We we we started to figure out a way that we could get heat in the tires a little bit sooner than we have been, but still, when that thing comes alive mid race, these cars just really start flying." Looked like Lazaro got blocked in a, some yeah. untimely traffic. That might provide for quite something down in turn one on this lap. I'm interested to see how they all come out of it. It's going to be fun, that's for sure. It's still candy leading. But you know what? That margin that was at five seconds is down to two and a half. So Kuno is starting to uh, chip away at it in that Dodge uh, Viper. And then Candy, the gentleman there, the factory Porsche driver, got up ahead this lead battle in the GTS, gave the guys enough room, let them go, and that I think that's what closed the gap there. Now he's cleared the GTS leaders. He'll be able, where Kuno's caught right in between, Dean Martin and Lawson Aschenbach. It would be an understatement to say that Nick, Nick looks fairly in control of this race. I wouldn't be surprised if he's being a little cautious. The last thing he wants to do is damage that Porsche and uh, you know compromise what looks to be a great chance for a win here. Absolutely. Speaking of Viper, is there is Dan Knox in that uh, number 80. Looks like he's uh, it's he just ran a little wide, Jeff. He's trying to get it going. He's still obviously life in that engine. Right, right before the end, he had ABS problems with the brakes. He said he thought he had it fixed. 
It's intermittent, which is very, very bad as a driver when you don't know if your brakes are going to work or not. Because he has to drive it like he doesn't have ABS. Perhaps it was working this whole time, and then it failed again. So it's one of those things, and I'm sure to get that car back underway and do okay. Well, Dean Martin didn't really want that to happen, but Johnny O'Connell knifed underneath him, and it looks as though Lawson Aschenbach able to get a nose down the inside of Martin as well. Hopefully we'll see him coming down into three and see if he was able to make it work. Did he get through? Well, we just cut away from it. We'll have to wait and see what's going to unfold. But boy, it sure looked like Lawson took advantage of that open door created by that Cadillac on Martin. Yeah, he was waiting for that point to pounce. It seems like Lawson was just staying behind Dean the whole time, right, looking for that gap. He looks like he found it. We'll see how that played out as they come back around for the lid here. It does not. Dean Martin got way up there. I wonder if that moved. Oh, oh, oh. oh. huge incident between the Bentley and the 24. That's Prince Albert von Thurnen Taxis and that rider engineering Lamborghini Gallardo. And looks like Chris Alton's another one of those that got pulled off there. But that Bentley with Butch Leitzinger off into the runoff. Oh, that's a tough, tough break. Butch Leitzinger was 11th. Uh, Albert von Turnen Toxis in that 24. Uh, Gallardo was sitting in the 10th spot, racing hard for position. And it looked like there was contact, and then we got the shot because when we picked up that shot, already damaged to uh, Albert's car at that point. So something happened there, I think. Oh, you know, those cars, the GT3 cars, they do have, you know, framework that comes up into the front. So to see it cleaned off like that, you know, that was obviously a pretty heavy hit somewhere. I'm yeah. not sure how that might have happened. I'm sure you guys have seen being at this track before, down at the end of that back straight. Uh, there are bigger impacts down there than you would think. People get mixed up with it being so wide, narrowing up to a bottleneck. You don't yep. know what can happen. Oh, it, it could be tough down there. And there's Butch Leitzinger in that Brightly, a Breitling Mobile One Bentley Continental GT3 parked, uh, got it woed up. So it's just sitting down there, Jeff. So we are full course caution. I like watching the course workers walk to the driver door. Unfortunately, this is a right-hand drive car. So they go to the driver's door. They can see that now they're going back to the other side. So right-hand drive is the way the FIA homologation works. They homologate it as a right-hand drive car. It has to stay as that homologation as we see Ray Mason down on pit lane in that uh, Toge 20. There it is. There's Carl Thompson waving and Jill Beck directing. Here's a good replay of what happens right now. Wow. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that was substantial. Oh. You called it, Alex. Uh, and there you can see uh, basically every fluid in that Lamborghini <laughs> yeah. come out of the front. Wow. So that's gonna, you know, that's gonna be a big cleanup, unfortunately. Yeah, not <laughs> sure if Butch just got in the back of him, or if uh, maybe uh, anticipated that he was gonna break a little earlier than he thought he was gonna break and run right in the back that's, of him. That's just what we were talking about down at the end of that straightaway. It is very, very wide deceptively so because it does turn it's a little bit harder to see on on tv but there is a, a substantial turn there depending on the line you pick you can get uh, uh confused yep. which car is going where and that can cause something like that unfortunately uh, in the history of toronto there's there's been some very bad wrecks down there and yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh that was a, that was a hard hit uh, oh. For the Lamborghini. But well, now we know the reason now. So that's huh? good. Now we know the reason. You get a good chance yeah, yeah, to see yeah. it. Thanks so much, Alex, for showing us that because I never would have known. Yep. That little curve right there to turn in, who would have known? Yep. Well, the thing is, too, I mean, nowadays with the paddle shifts, you don't generally miss a gear, you know, have a problem. But sometimes we've known those actuators to over-select and actually go down two gears. I mean, it happens. You know, you don't know. Albert is a pretty talented, even though he's a, he's a, a, a GTA driver, a gentleman driver, you know, he's won championships in Europe and the like. He is a very talented driver. It just uh, it, it just seemed like Butch was suddenly very surprised. He's been yeah. certainly doing a great job yeah. all weekend. Ryder, from what I've seen, puts out a great car. Well, uh, he qualified seventh. It's actually terrific. Field. That's, yeah, that's and amazing. Uh, and I think we all know uh, you know Butch's pedigree. Yeah. Like I said, you don't have to be doing anything stupid to yeah. have something happen down there because of the combination Let's of race the width, the corner, yeah. and the bottleneck into the uh, off the back straight. It, it can just happen. Yep, uh, and it's racing. You know, things happen, and uh, and uh, you, know, you know, cars are mechanical entities, and you know, things can uh, can happen. Now, it's good to see here that Butch is able to uh, get it restarted with a little help. He might be able to actually continue here. Now, you know, you never like to talk about you know somebody taking advantage of another person's misfortune in a caution, but. You know, one of the things, this could be a godsend for Johnny O'Connell in that Cadillac, too, because those cars, they get heat in those Pirellis quickly, but because they're so heavy, they tend to run them right off of the car sometimes. It, you know, they said when we get cautions, it's huge for them. They seem to abuse the rears, certainly yeah. uh, being 
you know, around them for a few years, they do uh, they do lose the rear of that car. So absolutely, we had the same thing uh, uh, when K-Pax was running the Volvos on the front end. Yep. Uh, just motors yeah. up there, all the weights up there, and we'd use up the, the those Pirellis at the front, and uh, we'd want a yellow as well. So I think you're absolutely right. I wouldn't be surprised if Johnny was uh, licking his chops a little for the uh, restart. And I have to say here, I think, let me throw out another scenario possibly for that incident with Leitzinger and, uh, and Von Turn and Toxis. Dan Knox's car was parked down in the runoff at three, and and uh, they were about to go full course caution for it. And I wonder if Butch was so close to Albert's car, he didn't see the yellow, and Albert checked up when he saw the yellow, and Butch was just unsighted and clipped him because Knox's car is sitting right down there. I mean, that's a possibility. You know, that's a great point. The local yellows uh, sometimes can throw you off. Yeah. I mean, you look even at a scenario like like my wreck uh, in, yeah. uh, in Road America. People didn't know what that yellow was for. There had been a, a very minor yellow yep. in that area before, and then people came through, and obviously, uh, unfortunately, the McLaren was in, you know, a thousand pieces yeah. all over the racetrack, and, and so people check up, and, and that can cause problems, too. You're absolutely right. Well, the, one of the cool things is that we have the live web stream at worldchallengetv.com. August 10th, we'll actually have the NBC Sports broadcast. That'll be the expanded coverage where we get the driver interviews, the in-car cameras, those great GoPro Hero 3 cameras that are on all of our vehicles. We might actually get to, a chance to see the in-car camera from Butch Leichtinger's car. Yeah. But if you want a chance to win one of those GoPro cameras, you can do that. Grab your cell phone How? and text to win right now. How? It's really easy. All okay. you do is grab your phone, text 313131. You want to text the word PVO. PVO, there you go, oh, yeah. <laughs> POV, point of view, to 313131. All right. Well, do yeah, it, folks, because cool. they are amazing. We have them on all of our cars and that expanded coverage. And yeah. you can always watch the ABC broadcast re-air at worldchallengetv.com. We, we have cameras in Figgy's car. There you you know, go. It's great to see what Alex takes through him because, man, you're busy in that car. I got a chance to ride with you at St. Pete, and your hands are clicking and moving. and it is moving a, It's a busy environment in there. A series of buttons and esoteric lights and dials but uh, uh you know i mean you uh it's, it's it's sort of a lot going on i try not to touch anything they don't want me touching anything so we're well, your driver exactly I, I don't know if you guys saw that yeah, the, the, the debris rail. field uh yeah. down there is is uh, huge they're gonna have a, a it's bit gonna of be a, a long chore one. here it's yeah. be a, and butch leitziger by the way limped that uh, brightly mobile one bentley continental gt3 down into pit lane fair amount of smoke, as you might expect, coming off of that left front corner, which is where he initially contacted uh, Albert's car. And uh, so they've got some damage on that car. They're going to be working on it, see if they can get him back. Everything seemed to be rolling okay. It was just something rubbing, I think. They might be able to get him back and out. And it did, uh, did give us a good look at that beast as it came by. That oh, thing boy, is an impressive you, piece of One of the equipment. things that I think is going to be an awkward moment is to see the crew with a hammer banging on Bentley bodywork yeah, to get yeah. it up. That just doesn't sound right at all. Yeah, it, yeah you're exactly right. That is a, <laughs> a neat, neat-looking car, and uh, it's a shame to see it out. Butch is uh, an awesome guy to have in this series also. Not only the Bentley, but having Butch here is great as well. Oh, and Dyson. I and mean, Dyson, you know, absolutely. One of, arguably North America's greatest sports car team. You know, dating back to the to the 80s and the glory days of the original IMSA and, and what that team has done. And uh, if anybody you know, hasn't been through the challenges, hasn't huge. been through the paddock, they do not bring a B effort. No, they, uh, no. <laughs> it is a, it is a beautiful looking spread they have with uh, two of those Bentleys, and uh, they've had a hard time keeping me out of there actually checking it all out. Yeah, we, they aren't club racing. <laughs> <laughs> they are not club racing, you're right. Absolutely fantastic. Well, we continue under caution. Coming up now, uh, we right now have 11 minutes to go, and there's a shot, folks. You can see off to the right of the cars there, a lot of debris still down in that area. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what we're going to be able to achieve. You talked about, Alex, this is a great crew here in Toronto uh, that uh, you know does the, the EV and, and track response and cleanup efforts, but that's a lot to deal with. That's about one fifth of a Lamborghini right there yeah. laying on the track so that's um, uh, you can't go you can't go back to green like that so no. we'll see uh, hopefully they can they can get out there safely and, and get some of that debris retrieved and as you say that we're getting word they're restarting this time by so apparently they're saying the debris is part of the track think about it we're going racing leave the uh, leave the red and yellow flag up and go for it i guess i guess that's yeah, uh, part right of the track online. i mean that that is allowed in the rules i can say you know that is now indicated as part of the track and uh, on that section you're right there will be that that uh, yellow and red flag with the uh, stripes that is a surface flag technically is what it's called and there certainly is a change in the surface so pace cars in 
Tandy bringing him around, but a lot closer on this start. Boy, he's lugging him at this point. This could be a Johnny O'Connell moment here with all the torque in that V8. Very, very late, green flag! And O'Connell pops to the outside, but let's not forget, I guess there is a V10 in that Viper too in there. But O'Connell gonna try and stream the inside, no! Not gonna happen. Then there's the lap car of Ziegler, that's gonna be a bottleneck right there for Skeen and Lazaro. See if they're able to get through, oh! Big contact! Thorne and Lazaro were very sideways, both gathered it up and continued. Boy, that was a late, late green, Greg. That caused uh, everybody, I think, to be on their heels a little bit. Now let's watch them try to make it through this debris field. Yeah, I guess everybody that's out of position here like that, that's a brazen move by Lazaro going, well, that's my shot. Or was that Mancuso, That actually? was Mancuso, I think, trying to Oh, and Thorne oh. is stopped. He's at a crawl, so maybe that little bit of contact did break something on uh, your teammate's car, the Cape Max McLaren off pace badly down there. Nick uh, did uh, enjoy a bit of an advantage the first restart. Maybe <laughs> they were trying to avoid that again. But I boy, think that's exactly that, that what was. That was very, yeah. very late for a, a 40 plus car uh, restart, so. Oh, and Lazaro down underneath Bill Ziegler. He's got to go right now, trying to move. And uh, boy, this is some fierce stuff that we're watching right now. Is that, I think Andy Pilgrim had a great restart with Thorne's problems, I think Pilgrim may have moved up a notch here now. They okay, sure did. Mark Wilkins in fourth place now. He got around Alec Udell for fifth. That is four position with Mark Wilkins. He's on the lead lap. His transponder's not working, so he doesn't show up on your live timing if you're watching live at worldchallengetv.com. Looks like they might have got him inserted back into the live timing now, sitting in fourth. That is unbelievable. So it's Tandy, Whitmer, O'Connell, Skeen, Lazaro, your top five. Pilgrim up to six. Safron is seventh, Mancuso in the Ferrari eighth. Palmer, after that early moment, back to ninth. And Marcello Hahn, and oh yeah, damaged that right, left front corner, Alex, uh, on his car coming in. Not a lot of smoke coming off it, so, uh, but he's definitely got a cut tire. Yeah, that looks like that's what it is. You mentioned earlier all the carbon fiber winglets and uh, the things that make these GT3 cars look cool uh, are also very sharp. And uh, when he got into it with Anthony there, that very well could have just cut that tire and that's all you can do. Yeah, they were both sideways there for a bit, Jeff. I mean, it crossed him up as we now have five minutes remaining. Yep. Five to go. And yeah, it could have been really bad between Thorne and, and Lazaro there. They were both to collect. I think Thorne got out of it a little bit, let Lazaro go. If he would have pushed the issue, we could have had a huge hit there. Good hits up from Robert Thorne. Unfortunately, he sacrificed his car for that and labels stay green. You mentioned earlier Mike Skeen looking quick, and he is uh, coming up on, yeah. on O'Connell pretty fast here, so we might have an exciting last five minutes with them. Yeah, I don't think that last podium spot's decided here by any means. Uh, the zero of Marcello Hahn, real wide here at 11. He had to get out of it big time to uh, keep it off of the wall. Did a nice job of it. But once again, Marcello Hahn had that wreck in qualifying or in the uh, in the practice session, is leading now in the A category with Mills in second and Henrik Hedman third. Every time he gives the crew too much work, he responds and gives them a win. It's unbelievable what he's been doing. Well, this time they actually gave him a whole spare car. He's in Tomas Inga's yeah, Lamborghini true. this time, and he's able to put that win together. Second place is Michael Mills. Needs to recover from a tragedy weekend at Road America, and his car lost the points lead. He's sitting second in GTA, and Heinrich Hedman in that beautiful Swedish flag draped Ferrari 458 GT3 Italia in third in GTA. And in GTS, it's still Martin over Aschenbach, Roche in third, let Mitch Landry up in the fourth, and Tony Gables, what a run, sitting in the fifth spot right now. So that is brilliant indeed, and there goes that battle. Uh, Ski all over the back, heading down, all heading back into, into uh, that third spot. And actually we get the update because of the transponder issues. It's Wilkins in fourth, then Landry, Gables, Boucher, McCall, Udell, and Outson. And this GTS battle is yeah. excellent still for Fierce. the podium, guys. I mean, they've been going at it all race. Jack Baldwin back to 12th place. I'm not sure what happened with that reset MD. Mojo, no. Stop Tech, Porsche came in. He's at 12th of the standings right now. Still running out there, but a 2.19 minute lap time. Got to see what happened there because he dropped way back in the field. Well, I wonder if he got forced offline in that debris and uh, you know got a bunch of junk on his tires or cut one possibly. I mean, these Pirellis are amazing, but they're still rubber. And you get those razor sharp carbon fiber shards. It could... Well, when you look down in uh, in turn three there, you see less debris, so yeah. it had to go somewhere, right? Yeah, that's a good point. Somebody scoops them up somewhere. Boy, you're right, Wilkins not only in third, he is coming after Jack Roush 
big time right now. Yeah, the battle for third between Jack Roush, Mark Wilkins, and uh, Alec Udell there, nose to tail. Michael Mills is split, or I believe that's Nick Candy is split, the GTS leaders checking out once again. Battle for third in GTS. It's Roush's right now, Wilkins wants it, Alec Udell coming all the way from the back of the field with Wilkins. Those guys teamed up and they did just that, running fourth and fifth. And we're getting a report, white flag, white flag, next time by. So you've got to make your way over to uh, do some NBCSN interviews. Yeah, I'm going to go down there and interview our winners. Alex Biggie, man, it's been a joy to have you in the booth. Really appreciate it, man. Thank we'll you be here so tomorrow, much. too, I hope. Absolutely. It's great to have you. Well, we're down to this last bit here, Alex, and it is going to be fraught. I am fascinated, as you said, to watch that battle for third in, GTA, uh, in GT and the battle uh, that's starting to shape up at GTS. There are two very serious battles going on in each class. I mean... Too bad we don't have a split screen here to keep track of both classes because it's, be it's, uh, it's pretty sure. awesome. Uh, obviously, Nick has uh, shown us the way in GT, but uh, GTS, there is still a battle for first place, that's for sure. And here comes Skeen onto the front straight. White flag, white flag by Skeen, showing the nose to O'Connell, not able to get through. That man, if you're watching here on a global web feed or on the big screens of 31 at Tandy, has just owned this one. He has already opened it up to about a second and a half. I'll tell you, Kuno's Kuno right there right now, Greg. Kuno just made it up a little bit of time in traffic there, and we could see something coming into turn three here. Wow, this is going to be fascinating. Look at this. Boy, he sure did. Tandy really got balked in traffic, didn't he? Suddenly, Montreal's Kuno Whitmer in the Dodge Viper SRT. The beautiful GT3R is making a race of this one. But when it's been clear track, Tandy has been able to always open it up. Looks like he's doing it again. It's still Marcello Hahn leading over Mills, and there's a big gap there in GTA. And GTS, Martin Aschenbach, Rausch under attack. Here we go, this is gonna be it. Boy, Kuno closed it up again. Boy, two great battles for the lead and for third right now. Kuno working the angles. Here we go, front straight. Looks Watch like Tandy's it. got it. Checkered flag in hand. Tandy's got enough. Nick Tandy brings home the first win of the season for Porsche over Kuno Whitmer. What a great story there. Looks like it is going to be O'Connell fending off Skeen and making that one pay. Absolutely awesome stuff. Here comes Marcello Hahn all by himself. He will be your GTA winner. But now, what's going to happen in this battle? And Jack Roush Jr. is full attack on Lawson Aschenbach. Dean Martin looked like he got a little gap, but Jack Roush Jr. wants that spot from Aschenbach, that's for sure. Well, here they come, through 10, through 11. Martin feeding and throttle. Aschenbach coming through, then Roush. Right, and look at Alec Udell. What a comeback drive for Alec up into the fifth spot. But they hold station. That is how it finishes here. This has just been an exceptional race after the restart great stuff indeed what an awesome race from mark wilkins as well from the back wasn't it terrific I mean, job yeah. even clean through all that stuff uh, with a solid top five great job obviously had a little bit of help with that big incident at the start but you still have to one get through that and then put a drive like he did and uh, just some fascinating stuff so good for him <laughs> for sure and uh, then of course that battle in gts incredible martin hanging on but Aschenbach and Rausch, there's some great attack. And then as we talked about, right behind them, uh, a blistering run by Mark Wilkins up from dead last on the field in that uh, put on the brakes.org Kia. A brilliant, brilliant race. And uh, then bringing it home. It looked to me like it was Alec Udell. Now, Alec may have been down a lap. I want to confirm that here. Uh, if so, then it would have actually been Mitch Landry bringing it home. So we'll confirm that. Great finish but, for uh, Mitch. Awesome that's case, stuff. Yeah. Yeah, best finish, I think, by Mitch Landry in some time. And the one that we, you know, one, obviously, Baldwin slipping back to 12th. You have to see after he was a very competitive fourth. And then the other story, of course, is uh, what happened to Drew Riggetts, uh, who had that amazing qualifying run. So real quick for everybody on our global web feed on world-challenge-tv.com, top five in each of the classes in GT, Nick Tandy earning his first win and his first run in the Prelly World Challenge with the Effort Racing Porsche. Kuno Whitmer, talk about a successful return to the Prelly World Challenge, qualified and finished in second. Johnny O'Connell, you know, the two guys in front of him aren't in the points, so O'Connell essentially winning the race. 
in terms of the season-long points for O'Connell. Great effort there in third. Mike Skeen, the guy that's right now second in points with Johnny, sits there in fourth. And Anthony Lazaro would slip to fifth after leading at one point in the points. Rebounds with a fifth spot. Third, if you throw out the two uh, ringers here, great run for him. In GTA, as we talked about, Marcello Hahn will win it over Mike Mills, the Lamborghini over the Porsche, with Hendrick Hedman in the Ferrari third. Brett Curtis and Bill Ziegler fourth and fifth in the Audis. And in GTS, Dean Martin getting another win on a street course, his third this year, over Lawson Aschenbach and that Black Dog team. They might count this one as a win. They've struggled this year. It's been tough. Then Jack Rush Jr., then the number 38, what a drive by Mark Wilkins, and then the 97, according to scoring, of Mitch Landry. Absolutely. Some names uh, we haven't seen up there consistently, but uh, great runs, and uh, I think uh, we saw traffic play a part on the uh, tight Toronto street course for both classes today. That was a, a big factor. Well, the interesting thing you just mentioned, you know, the fact that we've had some names up there that we haven't seen before, that's why we hold the races, isn't it? I mean, that, you know, <laughs> because things will happen and you get these amazing surprise drives when somebody just really finds it on a given day. Absolutely. I mean, you have some new manufacturers at the top of GT. Like you said, certainly uh, uh, the factory guys may be enjoying, uh, you know, some some performance advantages from those cars being uh, in the GTA category. But uh, when you're talking about Kuno and, and Tandy, you're, you know, you're talking about guys that are going to be contenders no matter what cars they're in. Yeah, and, it doesn't uh, it's matter. You know, it's nice to see, it's nice to see some, uh, some, some new metal up front. Yeah. And then uh, GTS was, uh, was a heck of a day. That was a, this was a fun place to watch it with you guys. It's, uh, it's great being in front of everything. And that, that was an exciting race in the GTS field as well. It was awesome. It was awesome. And as we said, we always would rather have you out on the track and that gorgeous McLaren flying around. But it's, since you can't this week, and it's been great to have you here. I would officially hear, based on the text we had before, we'd like you to come back tomorrow. Oh, thanks very much. I'd love to. This <laughs> was, was a awesome. lot of fun. This was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Uh, Alex Figgy, I'll tell you, what a treat. As you're looking on the big screens up there, you can take a look at the uh, lineup, the top 10 showing right there. And uh, obviously, uh, the number 10 is Marcello Hahn, your GTA winner. And uh, we've already run through the, uh, the other events. Yep. And a guy we were talking about. Yeah. Look what happened to a guy who couldn't have been more bummed out about his weekend. Nick Mancuso, what happened to him? Nice top 10. Absolutely. Sitting right there in eighth. Uh, that's fantastic. Tough start to the weekend for but Nick. But you stay sure. in these races and you keep it clean? That's what can happen. That's a big part of it. And we'll see. He may have thrown down a really good lap, and uh, he could be starting top five. You just don't know until we get the official word. You're right. So, during the race, it's a little hard to keep track of where everybody is. Absolutely. Well, with that, folks, we're going to wrap up our coverage here at world-challenge-tv.com on our global web stream. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. want to remind everybody, though, do keep in mind that the enhanced coverage Jeff was talking about on NBC Sports Network, NBCSN, where we bring you all of the onboards and interviews and features and back information will air Sunday, August 10th at 1.30 p.m. So you can tune in there. If you do miss it, remember, you can see any of our shows, whether it's our live web call or our NBCSN coverage at world-challenge-tv.com. We archive them all. Tune them in. Thanks so much for joining us here at world-challenge-tv.com, but we'll be back on the air tomorrow, folks. Remember that uh, at about 11 o'clock or about 11.45 tomorrow as we'll get underway with round 10 of the championship. Thanks for joining us from there. And with that, you know, we've got Victory Circle about to unfold, so uh, we'll look forward to having Jeff Leppard call the action there. Thanks for joining us on the web, folks. We'll see you tomorrow.